Hi, my name is Andromeda, and today we'll be discussing the lesbian history of Weimar Germany. As we discussed in the previous video, the feminist and homosexual movements of the early 1900s were largely responsible for the foundation of modern lesbian identity and aided in the formation of relationships between women who loved other women. In Berlin, Lesbians could be found in some of the bars devoted mostly to gay men. Magnus Hirschfeld remembered seeing lesbian couples, frequently in the Bulo Casino. They were also often seen in the larger clubs of the 1920s, such as the Top and the El Dorado. The Dorian Gray, one of the oldest known gay clubs of Weimar-era Berlin, even had a special night set aside for women. By the turn of the century, there were also a handful of exclusively lesbian bars in the city. These numbers exploded after the First World War, however, and by the mid-1920s, there were over 50 of them spread out across Berlin. The atmosphere of these bars were generally refined, with soft lighting and sentimental music playing in the background. One of the most famous was Chesma Bilsu, decorated in Greek style frescoes and furnished with private booths where couples could take refuge behind curtains. Many of the locals, however, thought this to be mostly a showplace for tourists, and they preferred the quieter and more subdued clubs such as the Malian Jugal. At the Malian Jugal, thick black curtains blocked the view of the interior from the street, which was decorated with comfortable armchairs to sit on, a tasteful mix of grey and garnet red, and a piano for entertainment. Many of the lesbian bars were segregated somewhat by class. There was the exclusive Club Mon Bijou West, open only by invitation, and the elegant Pyramid, full of artists and celebrities. There were also bars for older patrons, cafes for prostitutes and their customers, and the working-class tavern. Many middle-class women were still quite worried about respectability in the 1920s, so advertisements for lesbian bars often went to great lengths to assure their readers that they were restrained and dignified. There were also celebrations to be had for queer women. Lesbians could sometimes be found at male gay balls, and lesbian bars often held their own balls. These events were different from male gay balls in terms of the costuming and in their frequent exclusion of men entirely. The most exclusive ball in the pre-war period was a private party, open only to those with an invitation, arranged by a prominent Berlin lady. Normally, it took place in the ballroom of one of the city's grand hotels. Beginning at 8 in the evening, couples would arrive dressed as monks, sailors, clowns, boas, Japanese geishas, bakers, and farmhands. After sitting down to eat at tables lined with flowers, the director, dressed in a gay velvet jacket, would greet the guests and give a small speech. After dinner was over, the tables would be put away, and the orchestra would begin playing waltzes and other lively dancing music, inviting couples to dance through the night. In a nearby room, others would drink, make toasts, and listen to singing. One female participant remarked, No bad moods cloud the universal joy, including those of the last woman participants, who leave the place at the dawn's early night into the cold February morning. It is a place where among people who feel the same way, they could dream for a few hours about being who they are inside. In addition to having places to meet, there were also several lesbian publications at the time. Friedrich Razzuit, founder of the BFM, started his own magazine in early 1923, The Pages for Human Rights. In 1924, 
he started new titles to target specific audiences. And in September of that year, he established The Girlfriend, the first magazine to aim specifically at lesbians. There was also an attempt to establish an independent lesbian magazine titled The Pages of Ideal Female Friendship. The magazine's founder, Sally Engler, hoped that it would kickstart a new organization for women. The Ladies' Club were readers of the Pages of Ideal Female Friendship. Both the magazine and the club proved short-lived, but Engler went on to write many pieces for the other lesbian magazines during the rest of the decade. In 1928, a magazine addressing lesbians called The Love of Women began coming out, and it was soon followed by The Bachelor Girl. Both magazines' press runs were limited, however, due to heightening censorship laws at the time. Two prominent figures, known by many lesbians across Germany, were Claire Waldorf and Lot Hamm. Claire Waldorf was a prominent cabaret singer in Weimar-era Berlin, and a regular at many of Berlin's lesbian cafes and nightclubs. She got her start in 1908 at the Roland von Berlin, one of the most popular cabarets of the day. By the 1920s, her name was widely known, to the point where she would sometimes sing at multiple cabarets in a single night. Waldorf met her lifelong love, Olga von Roeder, during the First World War. They were both members of the Pyramid Ladies Club, which met regularly in one of the lesbian bars. In such tolerant crowds as these, she was very comfortable talking about her love for her Ollie. Lot Ham was probably the most important lesbian leader in Weimar-era Berlin. Her image appeared frequently in the covers and advertisements of many of the lesbian magazines of the era, and she was generally shown sporting a short haircut and masculine clothing. Ham was the owner of several lesbian bars in Weimar, Germany, and she also established a lesbian social club called the Violetta, that held some 400 members by 1926. It sponsored regular balls where women danced together to jazz music. Lotham saw herself not simply as a lesbian, but also as a transvestite, and in 1929 she helped establish a transvestite group for men and women called Dion. It is unclear the extent to which Ham's self-identification matches our understanding of trans identities today, however her identification with and advocacy for transvestite individuals in Germany is just one example of the bonds which formed between the lesbian and trans communities of the time. This is a topic we'll explore in more detail in the next video as we discuss the trans history of Weimar Germany. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned some valuable queer history, and I'll see you all in the next video.